Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that everybody is having a great week so far. I hope you're all doing well in school and well at work wherever you are in the world today. Uh, welcome King, hi Daily, hi Alexi. Kamala, good to see so many students in the class ready to learn. Students, in this class, we are looking at IELTS Speaking Part 1, talking about feeling happy. Nice positive topic for today. Of course, feelings like happiness or even sadness, they're mutual uh, among people in the world. And IELTS Task 1 Speaking uh, tends to ask about topics that are common to all people. Uh, now be ready uh, for just about any topic. So yes, they might ask you about your hobbies or sports that you play, but they definitely like to pick some common topics that are somewhat less frequently discussed. Like when I did my test, the examiner was asking me about math. So be ready. You could easily have this topic of talking about feeling happier when you're in a good mood. Um, students, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. Those are the websites that power these live lessons. They have all of our uh, lesson materials, exams, audio, uh, videos. So check those out when you have a moment. We're going to use this website in a little bit. This is aehelp.com. You can click this big red button there just above my head to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. So it's uh, very much worth it. People who get it and use it say, wow, that was a really good idea. Um, we're an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. So you're in great hands with us. We've been helping uh, people with IELTS for nearly 20 years. Um, and this week, we will have a special guest joining us as well. I'll talk to you about that in a second. Um, for general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. Again, click that big red button that's just right above my head there. And you are good to go. You fill out the, um, the form. You can use the code READ9 from our recent video release for a 10% discount. Um, and then you can use credit card, Google Pay, PayPal, whatever works best for you. All right. Um, having said that, of course, we have apps for you from your app store. You can download Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help, the apps link to the websites. So they're connected. You can learn from either one uh, to make it effective. Instagram, IELTS underscore A help, G IELTS help. And if you have questions, uh, shoot me an email, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. We're happy to answer your questions. Asha, Fuang, Dylan, nice to have many more of our members joining in the class. Israel, Harjot, nice to see Sneha, regular students in the class also. Fantastic. Uh, students, uh, we have this schedule right now. So you're probably like, wow, Tuesday. I never see Adrian on Tuesdays. Um, yes, I'm here. <laughs> so um, we have uh, this speaking part one class right now. We will talk strategies. We will practice speaking. We will learn vocabulary. You can ask me questions. Then um, tomorrow we have uh, task one writing and reading. Uh, members, what kind of a task one would you like to see tomorrow? Let me know. Uh, just put it into the chat. Do you want to see a pie chart, bar chart, combination of charts, a table, flow chart? What are you into? What do you feel like you would like to focus on? Okay, you let me know. I'm getting a lot of pie charts from, from people. Okay, you let me know. I'm going to keep looking at the chat and kind of get an idea of what's the most popular okay all right and then on the 16th which is thursday 
Uh, we're going to have a kind of a special class. That'll be a really fun one. I highly recommend uh, being present. I'm going to have a special guest, a former IELTS examiner with us who did IELTS examinations for many years and did the marking um, for the writing section and for other sections. So uh, you can ask uh, some questions and, and you know get some insights into that. So that will be on the 16th. I will post this schedule um, today on our YouTube community post. So make sure to subscribe so you get those posts and I'll post next week's schedule as well. So uh, so check that out, okay? Now, uh, we always release some great videos for you on our channel. We've got this one for you uh, recently. It's a reading video that teaches you some good skills for uh, reading, so check that out, okay? All right, music lover, good luck on your exam the day after tomorrow. I hope you do well, okay? Harjad, if you join the premium package on the website, it's just a one-time payment. We don't ask for monthly payments. It's just one time. Okay. All right. Anahita, there should be a join button next to the subscribe button when you're looking at the YouTube channel. If you don't see that, send me an email. Um, Apple users need a special link. And I think you have an Apple. There's like a weird situation with Google and Apple for some reason, maybe because of Android phones, they don't like each other so much, so um, they make it difficult for each other. So I know that Apple users need like a different link uh, to join um, YouTube memberships and they probably still haven't done that yet, okay? Yeah, Romelia, you can totally ask questions from the former examiner on Thursday. That's the idea, absolutely. Okay. All right, students, so as you can tell, I'm looking at the chat to get an idea of your thoughts and ideas, okay? All right, uh, let's get into some speaking part one. Um, so let's turn on the English uh, thinking caps and uh, get into uh, some IELTS speaking part one uh, questions. And of course, you can ask me questions throughout the class. I'm paying attention to you, as you can tell. Um, so IELTS speaking part one, everybody, it's the first part of the uh, speaking interview and uh, you need to show your best English from the very start. You need to show confidence uh, from the very start. You need to show fluency, okay? So <clears throat> just a, a quick reminder, so show uh, fluency, uh, confidence um, from the very start of your interview. Uh, to do that, uh, show up um, early, or instead of repeating show, let's say get to your exam one hour uh, before so you can get comfortable and practice your English um, with other candidates. Okay, so as I keep telling you, just find another candidate, say, hey, are you here for IELTS speaking? Why, yes I am, how could you tell? It was that really nervous look on your face. Oh, really? Yes, indeed, but no worries, we're about to change that. I'm here to help us both. Could you practice with me a little bit? I've got some questions, and if we could just practice our English, I'm sure we will both lose that nervous look on our face and gain some confidence and we'll be that much better. Hey, that's awesome. You're just the person I was looking for. Let's do it. Okay, um, and then you practice. And you know what? Start with the warm-up questions. So just like what we're going to do right now, start with those questions. Um, even though you practice those all the time, just start with those. You'll get comfortable, right? It, it will help you to um, situate yourself, okay? All right, welcome Chen, our chat moderator. I see that uh, we've got some smiles and some laughs. Okay, here we go. Um, so first question, the examiner will ask you once you've registered and you're in the room and you're all comfortable and they will say welcome, have a seat. Uh, if they say that, by the, say, by the way, if they say welcome, so let's say that the examiner starts off with this, welcome, please have a seat. Okay. Um, I've never talked about this, but that is often the actual very first uh, phrase that you hear from 
uh, the examiner's mouth like welcome please have a seat don't just quietly like a mute like go and then sit down without saying a peep um, that's awkward okay so ha let the examiner know that you prepared and you feel good about this whole situation you know that you should be there you deserve to be there so if they say welcome please have a seat what can you say in response to that so how would you think a, a confident professional native English speaking person would respond to that kind of a gesture or welcoming like welcome please have a seat Alex, Alexi says thank saying thank you yeah absolutely thank you and you can have a seat with just that mm, yeah uh, Nipa, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Maisa says, yes, thank you. Yep, yeah, thank you so much is okay. Okay, yeah, so you can just say... Thank you. I appreciate it. You can even say that if you want to show a little bit more fluency. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry, because when we have a seat, we kind of rest, right? So we, we get comfortable. So oftentimes you will hear a person say, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. And saying I appreciate it is right away some nice vocabulary too, right? It's nice natural vocabulary. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, students, this is speaking, uh, so make sure to speak and repeat, okay? Copy what I say, copy how I say it. I speak with a West Coast North American English accent. It's not Canadian. We have different accents across Canada uh, and the U.S. Um, it's more kind of regional. Uh, along the West Coast, like um, Vancouver, Seattle, San Francisco, uh, Los Angeles, um, Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, we have a very similar style of uh, of expressions and accents. It's a very clear, crisp English accent. You hear it in a lot of the Hollywood films, of course, Hollywood being in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a West Coast North American accent. It's a clear, clean, crisp accent. It's understood by a lot of people around the world easily. So you can confidently speak and repeat copy what I say copy how I say it okay all right so thank you I appreciate it uh, Summit says you can also say thanks for having me yeah that's another good one okay yeah because um, the IELTS examiner is hosting you in the exam so they're the ones that are leading the questions so they're hosting you so you can definitely say thanks for having me that's another good way Okay, and then the examiner will ask you, uh, what is your full, or sorry, what, may I see your passport? That's what I'm looking for here. May I see your passport? Uh, they will want to see your identification. Sometimes they ask for your name first, but in most cases, I think they ask for your identification. Some countries you can use your ID cards or your passport. Some countries like India, it's only your passport. So may I see your passport? Okay. Here we go. Yeah, Kevin, you can ask that question um, from Adam, from sure, from the former examiner. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So, may I see your passport? Mohammed says, Yes, of course. Uh, here is my passport that I have used to register. Uh, Mohammed, I strongly recommend don't use the I've. So uh, here's a little tip for you. Okay. Um, at first, do not use contractions like I've. Um, instead, use the words. Okay. I have. Um, do this for emphasis and clarity. Okay. All right at the beginning do that for emphasis and 
do that for clarity. So don't say I've, just say I have. Make it really clear for the examiner that you're using uh, present perfect, okay? And then later you can use I've. So once you have used the full term, then you can contract after. So I did not, I didn't, okay? Practice that way when you're at home. So practice using the full terms and then contracting, okay? Those are called contractions in English. All right, and then um, the next question, when they're looking at your passport, and the examiners are told to look at your passport and your face carefully, so you will often get the examiner kind of doing this. Some candidates get really weirded out when the, when the examiner looks at them like they came from another planet and they look at their passport like they're trying to uh, create a digital scan with their retina or something of your ID. Uh, don't get weirded out by that. It's not just them, it's IELTS. IELTS tells them to do that kind of, um, and it's a way to make a person really uncomfortable if they're cheating or using a fake passport or something. but. Don't worry about that, okay? Just be yourself, just stay calm, all right? So they will oogle, <laughs> oogle, not Google, but oogle. They will oogle your passport. <laughs> Don't worry about that. All right, um, so what is your full um, name, okay? And give a nice full sentence answer for that one as well. Don't go overboard, all right? Just a nice full sentence answer. V Ramgaria says, my first name is Varinder and my last name is Singh, but you can call me by my nickname Varinder. Um, Varinder cannot be a nickname for Varinder. It can only be an actual first name. So um, <clears throat> uh, that would be a little bit different. Varinder, let's, um, let's clear that up. So this is what Varinder says here. Okay. Um, let's fix this. So, Verinder, the correct version of what you're saying here would be my first name is uh, Verinder, uh, and my last name is uh, Singh. Instead of but you may call me, it's uh, quite strange saying that to an examiner um, who is testing you. Um, if you're talking to a child, or if you're talking to a subordinate, um, which is, you know, it's uncommon these days, then we would say, but you may call me. It's like you're giving permission and at a high level, especially when you use may call me. Um, so we're, we don't use that in modern English too much. Uh, my first name is Verinder and my last name is Singh. Uh, please call me by my given name, uh, Verinder. Okay, because Verinder is obviously your given name. Uh, your nickname uh, would be like uh, Verinder, and nickname is one word, by the way, students, when you're writing it. Um, so uh, it'd be like calling uh, Verinder uh, Spice. Let's give him a cool nickname. Hey, Spice. Um, so if we called Verinder Spice, uh, that would be your nickname. Okay, nickname changes. Um, and another way is if you say call me something for short, um, then it would be like Vari. Okay, so uh, my first name for some people. Okay, so you have this, or um, you have uh, my first name is Verinder. Uh, please call me. Vari for short. Okay, that's a short version of your name, like Mike for Michael, all right? Nickname is okay, but again, it's not really a nickname. It's just a shortening of your name, all right? So that's how it works. So keep those in mind. It's important to understand that, okay? Um, because especially for part one in the beginning, you want to show the examiner that you are familiar with English and culture, English culture a bit as well, right? Okay. Durdona says, my full name is Alimova Durdona. You can call me by my nickname, Donna. K 
okay, or with my nickname. Uh, Dordona, say, please call me. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, good. Um, then we go on. Um, Rakwe, we have a little bit of a special week this week. I'm not here on the weekend this week on Friday, Saturday. So that's why we've got a little bit of a different schedule. I mentioned that in a few classes last week, but I will post the schedule uh, today as well. Okay. All right. Now, uh, in part one, they will generally start with a couple of questions to get to know you better. Okay. Um, so they might ask you a question like this. Uh, what do you do at weekends? It's a very, yeah, Jahar, it's a pseudonym, is a nickname. Um, but we don't say pseudonym, not when we're talking about nicknames. We just say nickname, okay? Uh, so what do you do at weekends? What do you do at weekends? All right. Shaifur says... On Saturday and Sunday, I mostly like to take rest, take a rest uh, for a while instead of long while because I am a uh, full-time employee um, as an electrical engineer. Okay, so more detail faster, more concise cipher no period and is used to join sentences and I do house chores um, instead of and 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 um, try to change it up use different connectives then uh, in the afternoon I like to go I like to hang out with my friends okay Natural, high-level native English is concise, okay? We don't use a lot of extra unnecessary words or fillers. Uh, people don't like that communication because it feels like we're robbing or stealing their time, okay? So be concise, and it comes naturally, all right? So Shaifur, you have to shorten what you say and include more information. When you reach a moderate level, like a band five level in IELTS speaking, writing, then a lot of your energy during your studies should focus on creating better, more detailed, more concise English, okay? So that's a really important tip, everybody, all right? So once you have um, okay English, what does that mean, right? What's okay English? Um, so it means you can speak continuously on most common topics. Then focus your studies on detailed and concise English, okay? So just like the corrections I made for Shafur, Shafur, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name perfectly well, um, then, uh, then focus on those elements, okay? So Shafur, um, on Saturday and Sunday, I mostly like to take a rest for a while because I am a full-time employee as an electrical engineer and I do house, house chores. Then in the afternoon, I like to hang out with my friends. Okay, that's much better. All right. Uh, Bismarck says, during the weekends, I mostly undertake uh, domestic chores like cleaning my room, washing clothes, cooking. I also go to church on Sundays from 6 a.m. to 10, okay? All right, Bismarck, not bad. Again, concise language. Students repeat these sentences. Mondo says, oh, I love weekends. On Saturday for this spring, I love to go camping with family and I give my chance, my dog a chance to run along the river near my home. Okay, Mondo, focus your thoughts. You're kind of moving off uh, topic there a little bit so careful Arwen welcome back to our group of members uh, send me an email so I can hook you up with those exclusive videos Alexi says on Saturdays mostly I hang out with friends to forget about complicated um, matters 
like studying and work. And on Sundays, I prefer to watch Netflix, especially in the evenings. And then I focus on preparing for the next week. Okay, Alexi, good try. Uh, there's a couple of oddities there I tried to correct in real time. All right. Uh, Black Panther says, at weekends, I usually start with cleaning my room and then I play some online games um, like Counter-Strike and then listen to music or watch some movies. All right, Black Panther, make sure you give details in clear, accurate language. Counter is a bit strange without saying Counter-Strike. Okay, good. Um, students, next question. Let's keep going through. So as you can see, this is kind of the flow of the class. Uh, I'm giving feedback to your responses, upgrading your uh, responses with corrections, and we will be doing volunteering as well. Um, so how did you come to this exam? Give me a nice full sentence for this one. I'll give you a band nine answer for this one, and you can check that out and see what's going on, All right? So, Okay, that would be your band nine answer. Um, I arrived to this test by public transit. I took the number 62 bus not far from my home and it dropped me off a couple of blocks from here. Then I walked the rest of the way on foot. Why is this a band nine? So first of all, I'm using the question, how did you come to this exam? I arrived to this test. This is paraphrasing the question, right? So you always want to practice that paraphrasing, all right? Super important for the IELTS. Public transit, okay, some good vocabulary, and then some more details. I took the number 62 bus, all right? So I'm being specific, I'm giving good specific details. Not far from my home, and it dropped me off. Some nice natural language there. A couple of blocks from here. Okay. Then I walked the rest of the way on foot. Okay. Again, some nice natural English there. So you can repeat that sentence after me. Arrived to this test by public transit. I took the number 62 bus not far from my home. And it dropped me off a couple of blocks from here. And then I walked the rest of the way on foot. Okay. You could say, then I got on an e-bike, <laughs> on one of those rental e-bikes, and I e-biked. Um, all right. So that's how we can do that. Fuang says, I took the number 89 bus to come to this exam two hours before it started. So I had time to look back on some critical notes and listen to some uh, Taylor music. All right, um, Fuang, you're going off topic a little bit. I see you're trying to give details and be really fluent, but stay on topic. So focus on your um, journey to the exam rather than what you did before the exam. Okay, all right. Um, Begzod says, to come to this exam, I first jumped on a bus for 20 minutes um, after that I caught an uber as I was afraid of uh, being late so I took a direct route uh, Begzod you have some good ideas there but it's a bit awkward okay it's forced English and it comes across a little bit strange careful okay Yanni says I drove a car from my house to the exam center. It took about half an hour and then I walked from the parkade by foot. Took an elevator to the second floor, right? Took the stairs to the second floor. Um, you can't say place by foot in the second floor. That's awkward English, Yanni. So 
I took the stairs or I took the elevator to the second floor, okay? All right, not bad students, not bad. There's some creative answers there. Yeah, you can absolutely say, and then I took the elevator up to the fourth floor to register. So that's clever, okay? All right. And then once you've answered all of these questions, okay, so just a quick little recap here. You go to your exam, the examiner says, welcome, please have a seat. And then you say, thank you, I appreciate that. May I see your passport? Yes, of course, here's my passport that I have used to register. What is your full name? My first name is Verinder and my last name is Singh. Please call me by my given name, Verinder. Okay, Verinder, uh, I will now ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better. Uh, what do you do at the weekends? On Saturdays and Sundays, I mostly like to take a rest for a while because I work full time as an electrical engineer and I do house chores. Then in the afternoon, I like to hang out with friends. How did you come to this exam? I arrived to this test by public transit. I took the number 62 bus not far from my home and it dropped me off a couple of blocks from here. Then. I walked the rest of the way on foot and took the elevator to the fourth floor. Sure. Let's talk about feeling happy. Are you usually a positive person? Why or why not? Now, when you're studying the IELTS, students, you'll notice that often on these practice sheets, you have why or why not in these brackets. Okay, that's because you should always focus on answering or giving reasons for your answers or explanations for your answers, right? Like why, why not? That's your fluency. If you don't, the examiner will say it. They'll say, why, why not? If they're asking you why or why not multiple times, it's a bad sign. All right, it means you're not explaining yourself enough. Keep that in mind, students. So if you hear the examiner ask you why uh, often in part one, it means you're not being fluent. It's a bad sign. It means you are not explaining your answers and your fluency mark will be low, which will also lead to a low score. Okay, on the other side versus um, if the examiner is interrupting you, you are over speaking. Um, so uh, keep your explanation and example shorter and to the point. Okay. So that's the that's the uh, the the key there. So you want to find that balance. All right, the balance of the right answer. All right. So let's look at this one. Uh, let's talk about feeling happy. Now, of course, you should be thinking of words like joy, joyful, smile, positive, okay? Um, and we'll have lots more as we go along. Are you usually a positive person? Okay. Um, let's see here. Bagzod. says I wouldn't necessarily call myself too much of a cheerful person since I avoid getting into awkward situations while producing my positivity all right uh, students what is Begzad saying so 
Uh, what does this mean? I avoid getting into awkward situations while producing my positivity. What does that mean? Help me out. So I wouldn't necessarily call myself too much of a cheerful person since I avoid getting into awkward situations while producing my positivity. Um, so what, what, is, what is he saying there? Uh, Spam says nothing. Anahita says he's a positive person. Begzod, listen up because you have to tell me who is correct. So Begzod is spammy correct. You're not saying anything. Anahita says um, he's a positive person. Is Anahita correct? Uh, Nipa says, honestly, I don't know. So uh, Divya says, I don't want trouble with others. Fuang says, neutral person. Okay, this is what I think. Okay, Begzod is saying that he is shy. Um, so he doesn't like to express a positive mood often uh, because it makes him feel awkward. So is that what you're saying, Begzod? Is that um, you're you're shy? So that's why you avoid um, being overly optimistic. Which one is it, Begzod, if you're still in there? So is it nothing? Is it that you're an introvert? Is Fuang correct? Is Manisha correct? Okay, so Begzod says, yeah, you're right, teacher. You're. I'm trying to tell the examiner that I'm shy. Okay. All right, um, students, the reason I understand that Begzod is saying that he's shy is because I have over 20 years of English speaking experience around the world so I can figure it out but that won't be enough to get you a good score on the exam so Begzod I'm just using your example here it's a common situation to make a point okay you have to avoid awkward language um, incoherent language uh, will lead to a low score okay the most important score for your IELTS speaking is your coherence score. If, I, if a person cannot understand you, it doesn't matter what vocabulary or idioms or pronunciation or fluency you have, it's considered incoherent and it gets like a band three, okay? So incoherent language is enemy number one, okay? Uh, must be avoided as it will hurt your score the most. Okay, so how can you figure out if your language is coherent or not? Well, practice it, right? So if you're practicing with other people like this, you realize, oh, these people have no idea what I just said, so I have to change that in some way, okay? So avoid incoherent language, all right? Um, so here, Begzod, you would just want to simplify, okay? And often the answer is in simplicity, okay? So I wouldn't necessarily call myself one word too much of a cheerful person since I am a bit shy and I feel awkward when I express a uh, very happy uh, mood okay so that's what you're trying to say Begzod all right pay attention to that uh, correction okay so you have to be very, very careful with this, all right? Um, if a person is very positive, there's a word for that, students. What is that? A very positive person is considered an, starts with an O, continues with a P. That's right, Cleta Uzo, very good. Very fast, nice, optimistic. If a person's always a Debbie Downer, they're always negative. Ah, today's another terrible day. Ah, tomorrow's gonna be another terrible day. Um, then that person is, what's the opposite of optimistic? That's right, Anahita, it's a pessimistic person. 
So knowing vocabulary can help you. In this case, for this answer, you could say, yes, I would consider uh, myself uh, an optimist. Um, most days, I roll out of bed with a smile welcoming the challenges of the day and I do my utmost to spread happy vibes to others. Uh, just this morning, I uh, wished a wonderful day to my family as I left my home for this exam. There you go. Answer, explanation, example. Remember that pattern. Okay, that's the pattern that will get you those high band scores. Answer, explain, example. And if you combine that, or I should say when you combine that with great vocabulary, you're going to get those high band scores. Okay, all right. So uh, here we go. Repeat this after me, students. Yes, I would consider myself an optimist. Uh, most days I roll out of bed with a smile welcoming the challenges of the day and I do my utmost to spread happy vibes to others. Just this morning I wished a wonderful day to my family as I left my home. You can imagine that, visualize it, right? Bye everybody, have an awesome day, I'm going to my exam, woohoo! Goodbye Adrian, you're such a happy guy, good luck! <laughs> right? Okay, so yes, Philo, good vibes, happy vibes, right? We have to battle the dark forces in the world with optimism, okay? Uh, good, so um, that's how you do it, right? Visualize it, use your vocabulary. <clears throat> Very good. And it's good to start like that and go to your exam like that. It will help you to stay confident, okay? All right, everyone. So nice full sentences. Answer, explain, example, pattern. All right. <clears throat> um, one more here. Let's take this one and then we'll start doing some uh, practice. Uh, what do you do to be happy? Okay. I'll give an answer while you're thinking about that. So what do you do to be happy? So to feel in a positive mood, I firstly focus on diet as well as exercise. I am a firm believer in having a healthy body leads to having a healthy mind. I pay attention to all of the good that is around me, like my loving family and a delicious meal. And I try to forget about the negatives, like the guy that cut in front of me in the queue at the checkout counter. All right, there it is. Very visual, right? Very visual. Romelia says, music has a powerful effect on my emotions. So uh, to feel good, I listen to a catchy song. Like what, Romelia? Give us a song that you like listening to. Eye of the Tiger, right? In the eye of the tiger, in the heat of the night. <laughs> That'll get you pumped. <laughs> All right. So um, what do you do uh, to be happy? Full sentence answers. Uh, to feel in a positive mood, I firstly focus on diet as well as exercise. I'm a firm believer in having a healthy body leads to having a healthy mind. 
I pay attention to all the good that is around me, like my loving family and a delicious meal. And I try to forget about the negatives, like the guy that cut in front of me in the queue at the checkout counter. Vila says, I think that Q is spelled Q like that. Yes, thank you, Philo. Different Q, right? Okay, um, good. So that's how we do it, right? Nice fluent answers, staying on topic. Okay. All right. Some lovely answers coming into the chat now. And what I want to do is I want you to practice those as we speak to volunteers, okay? So as you can see, we've got another four questions here. And uh, I want to practice all of these questions with volunteers. So uh, the discount code that you should be using now is READ9. Um, it's a better, more recent code for the website, um, for the premium package, for volunteering everybody. This is what you need to do. It's free, first of all, before you freak out and go, oh, this is where I have to pay. No, you don't have to pay. Um, you can do this for free, okay? So as it says here, you can register a free or paid account uh, on aehelp.com. Chen has put the instructions into the chat, so you can follow Chen's instructions there. There's the URL again. Um, so you go to the website, aehelp.com. It's the this one right here. You can do it on the general IELTS one too. The chat is integrated, so it's all good there. So you go to the website, okay? And again, you can join the premium IELTS package by clicking the big red button that's just right above my head there. Again, it's a one-time payment for a lifetime access. And then, um, once you have access, you go to your My Student account. It should log you in when you create your account. It'll do like an auto login. And you'll see all these tabs um, it look a little bit different on your mobile, but you'll see the computer based IELTS. Uh, you'll see the full course. There's a lot of awesome materials here. I really highly recommend you go through all of them step by step. You can even follow the um, 30 or the 60 day study plan that we provide you with there. Um, and then uh, for this class right now, we're looking here, uh, which is the um, uh, student uh, partner speaking, okay? So we're going to use that function of the website, student partner speaking, right there, okay? It's so again, just above my head there. And you wanna click on that, and then uh, it will uh, ask you to agree to the terms that basically you're responsible, okay? It's not us that are that's responsible for your speaking you're responsible for yourself and what you say accept the terms and then you will be in this chat interface here okay and you see uh, Philo, Usman, Chayani, Fuang, Harjot, Masenate are in here so people are joining up Domenico just jumped in um, and then you see these blue envelopes. Uh, you can click on the one that's beside me. Beside me, you'll you'll see my name is Master. Okay. Uh, so you click on that blue envelope and then send me a message like I want to volunteer. Okay. And since I'm using Philo as the example here, and Philo has actually sent me a message, uh, let's let's start with Philo. I encourage. Uh, students to come back and keep practicing here, so that's good. Um, let's uh, reach out to Philo, see if Philo's around. Philo, love to volunteer. I'd love to volunteer, Philo. I'd love to volunteer. Uh, are you ready? Philo. Okay. Hi, Philo. Hello, Adrian. How are you today? I'm always great with your classes. How about you? <laughs> Thank you. I'm feeling good now that you just said that. It's positive. <laughs> See, positive compliments spread positive cheer, positive vibes, right? It's contagious. Um, good. Uh, Philo, uh, can you just tell everybody uh, real quick where you're from and why you're taking IELTS? So, uh, I'm from Turkey and I'm a doctor and I take IELTS to work in the United Kingdom as a doctor. 
lovely. That was a nice, concise answer. You gave me a lot of information in a very short form. And for doctors, being concise is even more important because you get so busy, right? If you take a long time to express yourself, uh, you really have to work a lot. So it's good. Okay, um, Philo, uh, then um, I will uh, ask you a few questions with this part one and uh, give you some feedback. Are you ready? Yes, sure. Okay, uh, welcome to the IELTS exam. Please have a seat. Yes, thank you for having me. May I see your passport? Gladly. Here is my credentials that I have used to register for this test. Please take a look. What is your full name? So my full name is Battal Khan Peker. Uh, please just call me uh, Filo as my nickname. What do you do at the weekends? So I really like to go to hiking and camping with my family apart from my work hours the weekends. We generally choose a uh, mountain uh, and riverside with my family to, to do camping and sometimes we have picnic while we're, we're there. How did you come to this exam? So I took the bus near my home uh, its, num its number was 85 and when I take off in the national park then I walk here by foot and then took the elevator. Let's talk about feeling happy. Are you usually a positive person? So I don't think I'm generally uh, a cheerful person. I like to laugh at jokes and sometimes troll a little, but I generally want to state facts and don't want to be too optimistic about the future. Okay, we'll stop there for a second. Okay, not bad at all. Um, Philo, that would be about a band um, 6.5 to 7. Um, some of your answers are definitely in the 7, even 8 range, especially at the beginning. A couple of the answers were closer to the 6 band. So the, um, the goal for you, Philo, is to really focus on having um, consistently a band seven or better answer okay so um, in your case you want to record your um, answers when you're practicing at home and identify which of your responses are lower quality um, if you need to work with a partner work with a teacher identify which ones are lower quality and then try to figure out why that's happening and adjust it so that you can make sure all of your answers are uh, seven or higher so that you end up with an overall seven seven five instead of a six five and you know especially for a doctor as I'm sure you have uh, learned um, the IELTS score that they're looking for is usually at least a seven five even when they're considering taking people for work and, and so on right so doctors yeah. need doctors need good English right of course um, so let me uh, just uh, go through your responses nice and quick here and give you a little bit more insight um, firstly your responses to you know welcoming you have a seat your full name uh, those were all really nice and natural and smooth I felt like I was speaking to you know a, a person who's definitely a very good or expert user of English so that was great. Um, when I asked you, um, what do you do at the weekends? That's where it started to get a little bit strange. Uh, you were very honest and um, methodical, which means you took your time to explain it and it was too much. So it came across mm -hmm. awkwardly. I said, what do you do at the weekends? You said, um, so I really like to go hiking and camping with my family. That was really good. And then you said, we generally choose a mountain. That's a bit strange, right? So I get what you're yeah. saying, like you guys prefer to go hiking on a mountain, but it started to get a little bit awkward and strange there, okay? So 
instead of going into more detail about where you go hiking and camping, what I would have done here is explained the reason why you like to go uh, hiking and camping, right? So I would have done something like, um, we really uh, enjoy nature and uh, it is a great way to get some exercise and fresh air. Uh, last yeah. week, uh, we went uh, to um, Mount uh, uh, Gulche uh, for a, a two-hour hike. Okay, so when you focus on that answer, explain, example strategy where your explanation is directly related to your answer, it's a good way to avoid getting into these awkward explanations. Does that make sense? Yes, I think giving, giving an example would be better. Yeah. yeah, so a simple example or a simple explanation for why you do that instead of where you go exactly and what you do exactly, right? So try this uh, mm -hmm. response. I'm going to say it and then just copy after me. Uh, so I really like to go hiking and camping with my family. We enjoy nature and it's a great way to get some exercise and fresh air. Last week we went to Mount Gulje for a two-hour hike. Uh, what do you do at the weekends? So I really like to go hiking and camping with my family. We really enjoy nature and it's it's a great way to get some exercise and fresh air. For, last week we went to Mount Gulls for two for a two hour hike. Okay, good. Do you feel how that's just a lot more coherent and not as many mistakes obviously, right? And a lot of information yeah. too. Okay, so focus on that when you're reviewing your audio, your recordings, okay? And then you'll be able to yeah. score well, all right? Philo, keep it up. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Adrian. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye, Philo. Bye. All right, let's give Philo a thumbs up for a couple of reasons. First of all, he was my first volunteer. Secondly, um, he is uh, a doctor, so he's helping people to heal and stay positive, right? Because health is a critical part of our positive mood. It's so, so important. Okay, uh, let's take somebody else um, who we might not have heard from in a while. Let's see if Mazanate is here with us. Mazanate, are you ready? I always ask, I always send a message first to everybody just to make sure you haven't left for the washroom or a cup of tea or to school or work. Um, thank you for the thumbs up, everybody, for Philo. He's doing great out there in Turkey. I, we would love to have him here in Canada, I'm sure, working as a doctor. Mazinate, if you're there uh, and you're still watching and listening, let me know. Give me a sign. We'll give you a five-second count. One. Two, three, four, five. Okay, we'll jump to somebody else. Um, let's see. Uh, let's try uh, Quan. I don't know if we've heard from Quan before. Quan, are you ready? I think he was having difficulties making connections, but uh, let's give it a shot. So, Quan, if you're there, uh, give me a sign. Uh, send me a reply, and then uh, we'll connect. Okay, here we go, Quan. Hi, Quan. I don't hear the connection on your side, so I'm not sure what's going on. Quan, uh, maybe uh, check if you can do a Wi-Fi or a LAN connection. I'm not sure how you're connected. I think you were having issues before as well. Um, students, if you have difficulties connecting um, in a class, make sure that you figure out what's happening and make a connection with another user before you try again in the next class. If you've done that and it has worked for you, then what you need to do is send me an email, okay, um, if you're still having trouble. But your first step should always be to test the system, just like with Skype or WhatsApp, right? You test it out. You make sure that it works on your phone and in with your connection, right? So um, if it works and you're able to connect with other people but not with me for some strange reason, then send me an email to adrian 
at aehelp.com. Let me know what's going on and then I will um, give you further assistance or I will have our tech team look into why that might be happening. Okay, we want to try to help everybody. So, uh, Quan, um, check out what's going on with you there. Okay. All right. Uh, let's try somebody else. Um, so uh, let's um, let's try to reach out to Lee. Lee, are you there? Okay. If you're there, let me know. He says yes. Okay. Sometimes we have to refresh the page too. So if I'm not getting connections, I'll refresh the page, but we'll try again. Connection seems pretty good on my end. Hi, Lee. Um, hi. How are you? I'm doing great. Are you? I'm doing fantastic. This is our hi. first time, Lee, right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Lee, can you mute YouTube? So just on YouTube, if you hit the little speaker button, then we won't hear the second audio. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, perfect. All right. Um, Lee, where are you, my good man? Um, I'm currently in my um, apartment right now. Uh, I should... As, actually, it's not mine. It's from a brother of mine. I'm just uh, in here for the moment. And which city, country is that apartment located in? I'm always curious where we have our uh, students joining from. Um, it's situated in Thanh Hoa, which is in Vietnam. Okay, awesome. So from Vietnam, great. And why are you taking the IELTS exam? Mm, I just want to want to um figure out what's my level set yeah and i know that in vietnam ielts is useful for so many uh purposes like university work and a lot of other uh getting pay raises and promotions so it's just a good yeah. test to have especially in vietnam okay well lee uh, i'm here to help you with that are you ready for some questions um of course sir okay let's talk Hi, about uh. feeling happy are you usually a positive person um quite frankly i am a, a joyful person i enjoy um chatting and uh sharing emotions with uh with other people besides i would try to make other people around me um joyful uh, to the best of my ability so in general i think i'm quite joyful What do you do to be happy? Um, in order to be happy, I would often um, chat, have a chat with people who I uh, assume are um, in a good in a good mood. Um, in addition, I would also try to uh, just find somewhere that is quiet to relieve myself from the stress I am suffering from. Where do you go to enjoy life? Um, I would often go to uh, a library, library. Um, as awkward and as strange as it is to say this, the library is a place where I um, enjoy uh, reading in simply because it is a place where there's um, uh, si where people are silent everything is very quiet so I won't be disturbed by any uh, elements and I just love re reading at places where I could fully enjoy the content of the book I'm reading when was a time when you felt especially joyful um, as a matter of fact, the time when I was um, the most joyful was when I met my father after his trip to America. Um, the, his trip lasted for two months, so uh, 
when I heard that he was coming on uh, the same day as my final school examination as well as he passed all his assignments with flying colors it really struck me with a powerful emotions that uh, has has had a long lasting effect that I still find it uh, very joyful today okay I'm gonna stop there Um, so that would be about a band 6.5 to 7. Um, you're quite fluent. You definitely have good command of English, so you can express yourself. And I can tell that you're not stuck to express yourself in one way, but you are really paying attention to choosing the best way that you know how um, from a few different options and and that's good that's showing me that you have some vocabulary you have control over a grammatical range uh, so overall it's okay your fluency at times is a bit on the slow side because you're thinking so much while you're speaking to express yourself so it might be a good idea for you to sacrifice a little bit of what you're saying just to speed up your answer okay um, okay. My other big tip for you, Lee, my other big, big tip for you is stay away from modals, uh, overusing modals. So in a lot of your answers, you said, um, I would, and you use the would a lot. So I would do this. I would do that. It would be like this. It would be like that. Um, when you do that, your speech becomes extremely hypothetical. like it means it doesn't happen anymore or it only happens under that certain situation do you understand what i mean by this um yes okay so it makes the speech incoherent it makes your listener think like well does that happen today or did that just happen in the past and doesn't happen anymore so be really careful um, avoid using wood try to speak more with affirmative language and this isn't just for lee everybody this is a common situation in IELTS and in speaking where um, people learn that in English using would or may or could makes it sound polite right Lee that's probably what you heard is if I say would it would be more polite right yeah I think so but polite doesn't work well for good communication in many situations when we speak politely Ironically, we also often speak incoherently. Like, oh, like you know, I'll give you an extreme example here, Lee. So somebody says, uh, would you like a cup of tea, right? And so I want to be really polite. It's my homestay family. I just arrived to the US and I want to sound really polite. So I'm like, well, I, I could drink a cup of tea if you would be so kind as to maybe bring me a glass. Um, so the uh, suitable answer here would just simply be yes please exactly right because if I say yes I would like a cup of tea if you could maybe bring me a glass it's kind of like so do you want any tea or not right like it's like it's so polite that it loses intent right um, and that's what happens so in the IELTS we don't want that the examiners aren't like, of course, don't be cursing and don't be rude um, in the IELTS oh, exam. That would, you know, I'm sure most people realize it's not a good idea. I, w I would not do that. Yeah, and I'm sure most people realize that, right? But but not don't go that. yeah, but don't go the other way either. So don't don't be like, oh, I would, I could have done that, I might have done that, because your mark will actually be lower. It becomes incoherent, right? So just be really careful um, with that, okay? Um, uh, so avoid the wood okay avoid the wood okay, okay. all right uh, try it without that let's take a look at this answer what do you do to be happy you said um in order to be happy you did a good job using the question you said I often have a chat with people who I who are I assume in a good mood which was okay and then you said in addition I would also try to find somewhere where it is quiet so that's where it was like confusing so do you still do that or not right so here just take that out in addition I try to find a quiet place um, a okay. quiet place um, to be with 
my thoughts as this always helps uh, to elevate uh, my, my emotions. Feelings. Yeah, emotions. Yeah, exactly. Right. And now it's uh, affirmative. Right. So let's try it this way without that wood. And you'll see it's just a lot clearer. OK, I'll, I'll say it and then repeat after me, Lee. Here we go. Um, okay. In order to be happy, I often have a chat with people who I assume are in a good mood. In addition, I try to find a quiet place uh, to be with my thoughts. This always helps to elevate my emotions. What do you do to be happy? Um, in order to be happy, I often f have a chat with people who I assume uh, are in a good mood. In addition, I try to find a quiet place to be with my thoughts as it's always helped to elevate my emotions. That's a band nine. If, if you, so if we just took that one question right there and you answer oh, me like that, I would give you a band nine. It's very affirmative, it's clear, to the point and with great English, right? And I'm sure everybody feels that. So everybody who heard that in the chat, who's paying attention to the class, you can let us know what you think about those answers. But I'm sure you felt like, oh, that was expert English, right? So Lee, focus on that, okay? Affirmative language, okay? Got it? Okay. All right, keep up the good practice and thank you for volunteering. I hope you come back again, Lee. Bye, Lee. Okay. Bye, sir. Bye. All right. Um, let's give Lee a thumbs up. That was really good. Yeah, and again, Lee, I hope you, you come back another time too. I'm sure you're taking some notes there. By the way, students, if you're taking some notes during class, that's okay. Uh, remember that this class is recorded so you can watch it again on YouTube. So it's good to just pay attention, um, especially when you're speaking and volunteering. Okay. Uh, let's take uh, let's take one of our students who's very studious, always here with us. Let's see if Fuang is here. Fuang is also from Vietnam. Let's see if Fuang is with us. Fuang, are you ready? Okay, thanks for the thumbs up, everybody. It's really great. Fuang, if you're still in the class, let me know. Okay, here we go. Hi, Fuang. Uh, can you hear me clearly, sir? La like you're sitting in my ear talking to me, Fuang. Okay, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic. How are your studies going? Um, I have uh, a lot of class um, on my university uh, and I feel a little bit sleepy right now but I try to burn the midnight oil to study for my IELTS. Okay, good for you, Fuang. Um, and um, I commend you for studying even when you're tired. Uh, it's, um, it's good to practice. English at times when you're tired or uh, just because we're not always a hundred percent when we need to speak English and and it's good to still be able to speak well so good for you um, Fuang are you ready for a few questions about being happy yes sir I'm ready okay here we go uh, where do you go to enjoy life um well Whenever I'm stressed out with my academic performance or my work, I usually go on a one week holiday to some nature landscape uh, with mountains and waters. That will remind me of how carry I am and forget the rations. Like eight months ago, I paid a visit to Pattaya Speak with my grain for two weeks. When was the last time you felt especially joyful? Mm, two of my best of recollections, uh, the specific time that I felt especially joyful was the day I received the email of my friend university, Foreign Trace, and um, I informed my parents immediately. I can clearly remember the happiest smile on the face when they turned to the neighbor as I was accepted by the top 10 university in Vietnam. If you could change one part of your life to be happier, what would it be? I'm so delighted with my life right now um, that I think it um, there's a need to change anymore. But given the change, I have to spend more time with my family. 
I am a student and have a bunch of work to finish all day. How has your definition of happiness changed over the years? Um, well, my definition of happiness hasn't changed too much over the years. I'm always fulfilled with my life and being connected with the one who I share a bond with. Um, that's made me uh, express positive energy to make uh, too many people around me every day. Okay, good, uh, Fuang. That was great. Um, Fuang, your English is getting really good in the sense of fluency. You're just as fluent as any other um, expert user of the English. So your fluency is easily a band nine because you hear the question, you process it right away. You use some very good strategies to show fluency immediately. So like here, how has your definition of happiness changed? And you said, well, my definition of happiness hasn't changed through the years. Um, so you immediately reflected the question. You used the hasn't changed, the grammar, right? The present perfect. So the the band score that you would get based on your fluency, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy is for sure a seven. But ideally, you do want to get that band eight, band nine at this point. So for you, it's really important again to just speak a little bit slower with more enunciation, more intonation. Like you're so fluent that I can't even keep up with your speech. You get through your whole answer by the time I type half of it. Um, it's almost too fast, right? So to help your audience understand you more, slow it down a bit. I want you to really practice. It's, it's weird to even say this as an English uh, teacher, instructor, but I want you to slow down and enunciate. So like really say, well, my definition of happiness has not changed much in the last five to 10 years. Um, when I was 10 years old, um, I was happy when I was with family and I'm still most happy when I get to spend time with my uh, siblings and my parents. So really kind of slow it down like that and enunciate, okay? Okay, sure, I got it. Okay. I want you to try that with me just once, okay? I want you to slow down to 50% of your speed, okay? How has your definition of happiness changed over the years? Oh, uh, well, my definition of happiness hasn't changed too much through the years. Uh, back in the days, I, my happiness is to uh, was to spend time with my sibling and my parents. Uh, but this day, uh, um, finish uh, many assignments and achieving goals on my university uh, can bring, um, uh, that's make me delighted about my life. Perfect. Okay, good. So <laughs> I can tell you're having trouble slowing down, right? Sometimes we do. People have difficulty pulling brakes. It's like, am I speaking? That was not slow. That was still very natural, normal English. If anybody felt that was too slow in the chat, let us know. But in my opinion, that was still okay. And I don't know about everybody else. Tell us your honest opinion. But I felt like I could understand Fuang much better with that speed because I could hear her words much clearer and her ideas. I felt that way. But if somebody thought, no, I thought it was better the other way, let us know. Give us your honest opinion. And, and don't just listen to me, Fuang. Listen to your audience so listen to other people as well but I felt that that was clear for me okay all right okay so, um, to tell you the proof uh, whenever I'm feeling nervous I I try to speak more faster than I can so I'm sorry about it no don't be sorry never be sorry about language there's no point um, but that's very common so there's two ways that being nervous uh, affects a speaker one and it's a very common one is your situation where you speak really fast and then the other one is people just get really stuck like they're like I feel happy when and then they just get stuck right so it's actually better if you're the type where you're nervous and you speak quickly so that's the better one uh, but you want to control that see now that you know that that's what happens you want to not only recognize it, but take the next step of controlling it, right? So you're like, okay, I'm nervous. I'm about to speak really quickly. I'm going to slow down and just really enunciate, okay? Okay, sorry, got it. 
All right. Thank you, Fuang, so much for volunteering. And be confident. Your English is good. You don't need to be nervous, okay? Thank you, sir, for having me. Have a nice day, sir. Bye-bye. Bye, Fuang. All right. So, yeah, no need to be too nervous, ladies and gents. You're doing fine. Okay. All right. Um, let's take another volunteer. Very bottom of the list, Kubalai. If you're there, let us know. Are you there, Kubalai? If you're still with us, let me know. It was worth hanging on. Kubalai, I don't hear you. You picked up, but I don't hear a sound. I'm not sure where you're trying to call me from or what kind of connection or device you have, but it's not working, unfortunately. Um, so check that connection. Try it out with somebody else. See if you might need a VPN or something. I know you're there. Can you hear me, Kubalai? If you can hear me, it's kind of halfway. Uh, and I don't mean hear me through YouTube. I mean hear me through the website. Okay. I can wait one second, Kubalai, but um, yeah, so again, students, uh, obviously when you're using a new system like this, ideally you want to test it, test it, okay? All right. It's a complex system, especially when you have another piece of software like YouTube running simultaneously, right? So if you have YouTube live streaming and live chat and another software, you really need to make sure you've got some good connections and good audio set up. Okay, and there's just a lot of places where it can misfire. Uh, Kubalai, don't worry about it. Come back, volunteer again. I'll look for you another time, okay? I promise you this, all right? Your name is very memorable, Kubalai. Um, all right, uh, let's uh, try uh, somebody else here. Lee, do not call me, please. I will call the students, okay? Um, so let's try. Uh, who should we try here? Let's try uh, Bogdan this time. Bogdan, are you ready? Yeah, and Chen's also giving some helpful instructions there on how to do and what to do so that you can uh, connect, okay? Hello. Hi, Bogdan. How are you? I'm great. How are you? That is fantastic because we're on the topic of feeling happy and I'm feeling happy as well. All right, That's Bogdan. Um, can you tell everybody, Bogdan, uh, just in a couple of words where you are and why you're taking the IELTS? Um, I'm from Ukraine, from a small village called Novy Merchik, and I'm taking the IELTS to get my master's degree in the UK in gas and oil gas and oil what uh, what made you interested in gas and oil uh, Bogdan probably my geography teacher because ever since uh, I got in high school I was taught by him and he got me interested in gas and oil uh, during my uh, during my geography classes and I thought that would be really great if I uh, enter university and that would be my major and um, I never regretted that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I've, I've learned a bit about that over the years. I've had a lot of students from Saudi Arabia who are, of course, interested in gas and oil because they have a lot of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, it's quite an interesting field for sure. All right, well, let's get into some of these questions. Uh, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, um, if you could change one part of your life to be happier, what would it be? Given the ch chance, I would probably change my diet because these days uh, I'm uh, busy as a bee and it's really hard for me to uh, eat a healthy diet. And um, if I could allocate some of my work to my co-workers, I would probably uh, start making some salads instead of eating hamburgers. How has your definition of happiness changed over the years? 
It has changed immensely because when I was 10, I thought that acquiring a new phone or laptop would make me happy. But now when I turn 20, I realize that uh, being healthy and uh, having a healthy family is uh, more important than having a new phone. Okay, I'm going to stop there. You're doing a good job, Bogdan, with those questions. So I'm just going to give you some reflection. Um, that those That's a band nine, okay? That's what band nine answers sound like. Um, they're very natural. They're very accurate. So, you know, depending on your examiner, if the examiner had a bad cup of coffee and they're extremely picky on the pronunciation of a couple of words, they might give you an mm -hmm. 8.5. But... It really should be an 8.5 to a 9, so um, you should be at the, the highest levels uh, of, uh, of the grading between very good and uh, expert um, answers. Uh, I'll tell everybody why, okay? So uh, you're paying attention to lessons, Bogdan, it's good. Are you using the premium version of the course as well? Like, are you going through the slides in the course? No, I haven't purchased it yet, but yeah, I'm considering it. <laughs> All right. Um, th yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of good knowledge there as well, for sure. But uh, yeah, I can tell you're really paying attention to my instructions. So if I, I said if you could change one part of your life to be happier, you said given the chance, I would probably change my diet, and that was very smart. So you're showing me the condition, given the chance, and you're choosing a simple common concept right so a lot of us know that exercise and diet are essential to having a good mood and so you're not over complicating it with some really bizarre answer like saying well if I could purchase a new piece of software for my computer that's been giving me a lot of headache these days so you're not thinking of like a weird complicated response but you're just keeping it mm -hmm. simple right and for the IELTS that's what you want to do you don't want to get too complicated um, so mm -hmm. you said, I would probably change my diet because these days I'm busy as a bee. When you use an expression uh, or an idiom, Bogdan, like busy as a bee, either use it confidently or don't use it at all. Okay. okay. Using an idiom um, with low confidence like you did, it makes it a bit awkward, mm -hmm. right? You're like, I'm busy as a bee. Yeah. I'm like, did he just say I'm busy as a bee? I think he said I'm busy as a bee. Uh, so you want to say that <laughs> like nice and loud, right? Like these days I'm busy as a bee. In natural English, we would usually emphasize that idiom in this case. I'm busy as mm -hmm. a bee. So it's hard for me to eat a healthy diet. And then you finished with a really nice example. So I would eat some salads instead of hamburgers. Great, mm -hmm. okay. All right, um, so let's say this sentence one more time and then just emphasize that idiom. Uh, given the chance, I would probably change my diet because these days I'm busy as a bee. So it's hard for me to eat healthy. If I could allocate more of my work to my colleagues, I would eat some salads instead of hamburgers. Try it one more time with lots of confidence, Bogdan. Yeah. Given the chance, uh, I would probably change my diet because these days I'm busy as a bee, so it's really hard for me to eat a healthy diet. So if I could allocate some of my work to my co-workers, I would eat some salads instead of hamburgers. Very nice. Now, the other answer that you gave here uh, was also very good. You reflected present perfect. You said it has changed immensely. Very nice start to the response. And then a very good explanation because when I was 10, I thought happiness came in the form of a new phone or a new laptop. Mm -hmm. But now I realize that happiness is much more about the connections that we have in life to other people, such as my relationship with my friends and family. And that was brilliant. Again, a relatively simple, true answer that many of us go through with our childhood compared to our adulthood, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So um, don't. So here's a tip for everybody learning from Bogdan's valuable answers: is don't overthink it. Keep your thoughts simple, right? That's very good, Bogdan. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Any questions, Bogdan, about the speaking? Probably. I don't have any questions, but my exam in a month and a half 
but probably coming closer to my exam, I will have some questions, but not right now. Yeah, don't be shy. Anytime it, one comes to mind, just send us an email and we'll help you out, okay? Yeah, of course. Okay, All right. Thank you. Bogdan, have, have a nice lovely rest day. Of your day. Yeah, you too. Stay happy. <laughs> Bye for now. Goodbye. All right. That was Bogdan. That was great. Thumbs up to him. That was fantastic. Um, students, we're using the chat here. And again, a lot of you who are in the class today um, and have not used this before, make sure to practice and practice with each other like Frost, Dewey. Both of you have good English. Both of you are premium students. Ping each other. Practice these questions with each other. Talk about happiness. It's a good topic. Um, so this chat is for everybody to interact with everybody, not just for everybody to interact with me. Sometimes I get the feeling the only time people are using this is with these live classes, but you shouldn't. You should just have this open on your desktop when you're at your computer and then use it when somebody pings you. Take the chance to get a speaking partner. Tomorrow, uh, everybody, we have writing task one. Maybe I'll do a pie chart. Looked like that was a popular uh, request. Um, and uh, we'll have reading uh, for subscribers, so subscribe. Uh, students, the website that we just used is uh, aehelp.com. Uh, you can click this big red button that's just above my head there to join the premium version of the course. Uh, again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access, okay? So make sure to use it. General IELTS, gieltshelp.com, it's this here. Uh, use it. Um, okay, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. There you go. Okay, Chen's got the link for you in the chat. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great way to help boost your scores for this very expensive exam. The website is a lot, lot cheaper. Um, students, uh, so we've got a special week for you this week. Again, we've got two classes tomorrow and we've got a class for you on Thursday that will be a special class with a special guest. So check that out and uh, visit our website, sayhelp.com, gltshelp.com. Thank you, Chen, for moderating the class. That was great. That was kind of you. Um, and uh, thank you, uh, members, for joining. I will keep a special eye out for you over the week um, to get some of you involved. Thank you to our regular students and our subscribers for supporting us as well. I hope you have a happy rest of your day. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada, but I will be back tomorrow. Bye for now, everybody.